So what happened? If you're anything like Marissa, maybe things started to light up, you got a little bit of sweat, but you might have felt some interesting things happening. Well, let's start off our R1 principle explanation by defining exactly what the functional sphere is, as that's our guiding principle for this entire module. But in order to understand the functional sphere, we first have to ask ourselves and answer the question, well, what is function? You've been talking about Presidos being the functional exercise system. We hear different definitions depending on who we talk to. Heck, it varies all the time. So how do we create some type of way to understand what exactly function is? Well, here at Presidos, we came up with a simple framework, which we're now gonna present as a way to kind of anchor in all the concepts that are to follow. And when we look at function, we basically define it as the needs of the body, the wants of the individual required to accomplish a goal. So if you look at how we've been packaging everything in threes, we have R1, R2, and R3. Function is needs, wants, goals. So when we look at what R1 really stands for and how the functional sphere is actually applied, the functional sphere helps us restore what the body needs. So when we were back in, on one and nine before we even did the workout, I had you guys kind of reaching everywhere and you're saying, well, what's the silly stuff? Why am I moving all over the place? Well, there's always a why behind the what. There's method to my madness. And more importantly, you are trying to get a feel of what your body is capable of doing. And when we're restoring, we're restoring normalized motion. And there's a lot of motion at many different points throughout the body. But being training simplified and trying to give you a system that allows you to think as a curious scientist, we wanna basically say, okay, let's use our power of observation to understand the quality of the movements our clients are showing us. So when we're moving around here, it's very easy working from the ground up to say, there's something happening at the ankle, the knee, the hip, lumbar, thoracic, cervical spines, shoulders, and our hands and elbows. So if we take that approach and we say, qualitatively, how are we moving? and we get back on it now after the intervention, which was the R1 workout we did, move around again. See if you go a little bit further. See if something feels a little bit more stable. See if you're able to have a little bit more control, if you feel more comfortable, more confident. I can almost guarantee you that something did in fact change. Well, why did it change? Well, if we take the principle of the functional sphere and we unpack four concepts that support it, we'll be able to really describe what just happened. Now, if we remember back to how we began, we started on the five and the nine. And Marissa took this left knee and she said, hey, drive it to the 45. And this brings up our first concept, a new word that you might not have heard before, which is the term driver. When we refer, refer to exercises, when we refer to creating motion in the joint, and we refer to reinforcing movement or global patterns, we use the word driver to denote that which creates the initial motion. So of course, my foot can be a driver, my knee can be a driver, as in the instance right here, hey, my knee's driving, and it's creating motion. My hand can be a driver, but friends, what I can tell you is we have to take note and appreciate what the most important driver is. Any idea? Is it the foot? The hip? The hands? Or the eyes? You see, our bodies are driven subconsciously by desires. Right? If I want to get a glass of water, I have to first locate where the water is. I think in my mind, but then my eyes physically locate it. Then my arm follows behind. So if we think about the eyes as being a super powerful driver and that Presidos is a visually enhanced environment, we have to take note and we have to respect and value the fact that where our clients are looking can be critical to how the body moves. Now, why is this? If the concept of a driver is, hey, I move my knee here, what am I going after? Well, I'm going after motion at the ankle, which means now we have a very, very important principle that says when something moves, everything moves. If I stood here, I took my eyes as my driver, I turned to the side so you can see the profile, and I looked up. What happens to my hips? Easily as well, if I stood straight ahead, if I took my hand here and I said, hey, thumb, right rotate, what happens to my left foot? 
And this is the principle. This is the concept. This is a very critical point that we demonstrate the power of what we call chain reaction. Or when one thing moves, everything moves. So we know that the body is driven, that something is driving us, whether it's our eyes, our hands, our knee, our foot. And that motion that is being driven is created somewhere else in the body because it's a chain. When one thing moves, everything moves. So we want to keep these two concepts in mind to reinforce functional sphere because when we're here and we're assessing, we're just checking for the quality of movement. We can obviously go down the biomechanical funnel and, and break down exactly what's happening at every joint. But that's not this course. This course is to give you a simple version of something very complex. Now, based on the scope of your expertise and based on how deep you want to dive, I encourage you to get curious about maybe what's going on at every single individual joint, maybe how the body is connected, maybe how you can use your scope of expertise in whatever it is to further enhance the material that we're doing here. It's very important to make note of that because everything can be combined if we begin to ask the right questions. Now, as we dive deeper into what exactly happened, we said, okay, I was here. I was on five and nine. I took my knee and I drove it to this 45. I drove it to the zero and I drove it to this 45, creating a chain reaction down into my foot, which gave it what? More mobility. So we're at a point now where we're layering deeper into our concepts and we're saying, hey, motion in the R1 programming model is driven by something in the body which creates a chain reaction somewhere else which allows the body to experience more mobility. We're creating more mobility. And of course, we don't want to have mobility without stability or else we get instability. So immediately what we looked at is taking our mobility, more points of contact, and we reduced the base of support. We picked up the foot which then allowed us to be in an environment of stability. And this is our third concept that validates our functional sphere. And we say, hey, given all the available motion from a fixed position, which is what we would describe as our functional sphere, I have all this available motion and I'm showing it to you as a client as I'm assessing. And I say, okay, well, maybe I'm a little stuck here. Maybe something hurts here. Maybe I can't go far here. Maybe my foot lifts up. These are all signs. These are all curious observables that I, as the curious scientist, the practitioner, can make note of and based on what I know can create interventions. But bringing it back to the system of procedos and understanding, all right, well, I drove motion all over the place. This is great. I use the concept of chain reaction to know that if I'm driving my hip, what's that doing to my foot, to my pelvis, my thoracic spine, my cervical spine? Where are my eyes looking? These are questions we're continuously mulling over. And what's even more exciting is that after we put the entire thing together, well, there has to be a process. There, how, where do we come up with, where do I start? And this is our fourth concept that now allows us to say, okay, we're going to go from a local to a global approach. We're going to start small and move big, which is why the first thing that we did was we moved the knee, we drove the knee to chain react down into the ankle. I'm not saying, hey, ankle, invert. I'm saying, hey, knee, drive. Remembering how we're cueing, remembering the power of targets and utilizing our communication skills by designing a task for the client to participate in, we get what we want. More importantly, we give the body what it needs. The body needs motion. And in order for us to be efficient at clearing and giving the body back this motion, we say, okay, let's drive here, let's drive here, and let's drive here. That's our mobility, stability. We drove all the way through here and even more stability. So we realize now that the principle of functional sphere is validated by using a driver to create a chain reaction. That chain reaction creates mobility and stability throughout the entire system. We went from the ankle to the hips to the thoracic spine. And finally, we said, all right, well, let's put it all together. Let's go globally. Because when we're talking about authentic human function, which is the needs and wants required to accomplish a goal. So whether that's getting a glass of water, whether that's hugging a loved one, whether that's picking up a child, moving a box, pulling something off a shelf, whatever the functional goal is, we have to make sure the body has what it needs in order to accomplish the goal effectively. And of course, you're thinking to yourself, well, how can I train everything all the time? Well, you can't. 
but you can get as close as possible with moving in all of these different patterns and restoring the motion that might not be there, whether it's neurological, whether it is musculoskeletal, whether it is psychological, or whether it's even confusion, like I just don't know how to get my foot to evert. Any which way that it may be, we're looking to give you the process to allow that client to experience the success they want to experience. So then we go from our local standpoint to our global standpoint. And that's where we stood back here on the eight and the nine. We took that right foot, we went all the way up to the three and we took our arms and we swung them back overhead. Now this system can be used as an assessment because it is the 3D map system from the Gray Institute, but we're using it here primarily to validate and enhance the mobility and stability from a global perspective for our clients. So as we go through here, we're just looking to cue them to move through this stance hip. And we'll get into a little bit more about how the reaction happens, but realize that after we go locally, we go right here, we wanna go globally. And these principles then can funnel back into the functional sphere and allow us to improve the quality of motion that our clients have because in order to accomplish anything, we first must give the body what it needs.